This channel is mostly me going on about how great declarative code is, but you may also notice and I've explicitly mentioned that the code I write is not fully declarative. At least in the Angular space, I don't think anybody codes fully declarative and I'm not sure that's even possible. Usually the reason the code I write is not fully declarative is because I often do this. I next subjects, can you believe that? The problem with nexting subjects or setting signals and why it is imperative, not declarative, is because we don't know what this thing is or how it changes over time just by looking at its declaration. To understand what this is, I need to search through the rest of the component. And then I can see that this subject is being nexted in response to the next and previous page buttons being clicked. So in the end, I'm still composing this stream that is created by nexting this subject into my stream of data. And overall, this is quite a declarative approach with just a tiny bit of cheating. But I don't need to cheat like this. I could go full declarative mode. I don't need to create a subject that I next in response to buttons being clicked because I can just compose the DOM events from those button clicks directly. So then we end up with something like this. We can delete the subject and the handlers we were using to next it. And now we just have this one declaration that defines the behavior of what the current page should be. We create observables using from event for our next and previous buttons in the template. And to make my life a bit easier in just a moment, I'm mapping these to one and negative one to indicate how they should affect the current page number. The scan operator is similar to a reduce and basically allows us to collect whatever values have ever been emitted on this stream. We start with an initial value of one and then each time either of our buttons are clicked, we add it to the initial value. So if next was clicked, it will add one. And if previous was clicked, it will subtract one. And we also add this check to make sure we don't go below zero. Now you might also notice that we start with this timer observable stream and then immediately switch away from it. So this is really just a nice little hack to deal with the fact that the next page button and previous page button aren't defined immediately. So this delays the evaluation of our buttons until after the template has been initialized. So cool, this works just as before, but no next is being used and we're not breaking any of those declarative rules anymore. But what if we try to expand this strategy to the rest of the application? What if we have a service that is sharing data throughout the application and we want to be able to modify that data from various places, basic CRUD operation stuff. So as an example, we will use this service from the example signals application I created for a previous video. So this one doesn't next subjects, it sets signals, but it's the same basic idea. We have this add method that can be called in the service and calling that method will modify this signal. And that is where all of the data we want to share throughout this application is stored. But we know we can't next subjects or set signals because that would be naughty. Now we might try to do the same thing again here, rather than imperatively setting a signal or subject by calling the add method, we could just use the event directly from wherever the add action is originating, right? Just like we did with the pagination example. The problem here is that the action is going to be triggered from within a component or it might be triggered from multiple different components. And we want that stream in our service. So our service would need to do something like get references to every component in the application that wants to trigger a change and compose a stream of whatever is triggering those changes. But those components might not even exist yet. So, so we give up on our dreams of having a fully declarative code base and just stick with our simple but imperative add method that necks a subject or sets a signal. This is a nice pattern in my opinion, and it is only a very minor concession. Although technically it is imperative, it's not like we are giving up on this whole declarative idea. Nexting a subject or setting a signal in this case is like this little imperative detour that makes things easier and then we get right back onto the declarative highway. So we established that a little bit of imperative code can be okay, even required in some cases. And now that we know that, do we still keep this fully declarative pagination approach at the component level just because we can in this case? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. That's up to you to decide. Uh, in most cases, I prefer to go with the little imperative shortcut. I think it simplifies the mental model a great deal, but I think both approaches are fine and I might even end up changing my mind on the subject. If I could make my code 100% declarative, I probably would. Uh, even if it were harder in some cases, but 
since I can't, I feel like I've got a bit more freedom in determining where I should draw that imperative line. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, if you found this video interesting or useful at all, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I'll catch you again next time.